Greetings, YouTubians, and welcome back to Wayne Sharp World, where today we have another episode brought to you by DLT Trading. Check them out for all of your knife and EDC needs. And today we're taking a look at quite the beauty that is none other than the Olamic Wayfarer. Now, before I go any further into this, if you would like to thank you guys for tuning in today. If you like what you see, please do me a huge favor. Hit that subscribe button, follow along, and I will continue to bring you the content. Now, let's take a look at some overall specs on this knife right here. We have an overall length of 8.13 inches, a blade length coming in at 3.5 inches, with a blade width of 1.11 inches. The blade thickness on this guy is 0.14 inches, and blade material is M390 with a Tonto-style blade. This is indeed a Tonto-style blade. We'll talk more about that here in just a second. With a flat grind, a handle length coming in at 4.82 inches with a handle thickness of 0.46 inches. The handle width on this guy is one inch with titanium handles and, um, of course, all sorts of other stuff going on, which we will talk about as well when we get to the handle and ergos. A locking mechanism of a frame lock with a user of a right hand only tip up carry, a weight coming in at five ounces and a price of a whopping $795. Now that is obviously due to some very special inlays and some custom work here that we'll get to as well. But first, let's take a look at some size comparisons. This is a good size knife. This is not a small knife. And since it is a high-end knife, we will do size comparisons with other high-end knives. Not quite as high-end, but uh, we have the Sharp by Design Evo Typhoon, as well as the Spartan Harzy COVID Edition Folder. As you can see there, it is a little smaller than both of those two. Um, but still, still good size. I think some of it is, you know, that this this design kind of arcs a little, so it's not as straight as the Harzy Folder or the uh, the Evo Typhoon. But it feels really just as big in hand. You definitely feel like you have a uh, holding on to some to a beefy blade. That's for sure. And then I'll close out with a couple of my favorites, my all time favorite, the Koenig Arius, as well as the Chris Reeve Sebenza. So as you can see there, it uh, kind of measures up, but it is a little bit shorter than all the knives seen in these size comparisons, but all some very good, very high quality premium builds for sure. And uh, now let's get right into this guy because we have a blade that is just absolutely gorgeous. A very attractive and very unique Tonto style blade. As you can see, this is their version. This is Olamic's version of a Tonto. But as you can see, there's no second point. There's just a whole lot of belly there. A pretty pronounced belly. Um, and I personally like that. I think that makes this easier to sharpen. Depending how you do it. Depending what your method is. Um, every one is different, but you know, you may have to, if you're having like a KME style, you may have to angle it around a little more or something like that. Um, but I think overall, I just also like the way it looks more and I don't think you're missing anything with that, uh, with that second pointy tip of, of what is a normal Tonto. Um, you also have a super slicey blade on this guy with a reading coming in at 14 thousandths behind the edge. Now that was very nice to see. I really enjoyed seeing that because previously I had reviewed a, an, an Olamic Whippersnapper, which as you guys know, was kind of a, a smaller front flipper knife. It's not the Busker, which is much smaller. This is just, it was um, just a Whippersnapper. So, but that had a pretty thick edge. I, I wanna say that was like 25 or 26 thousandths behind the edge. So when you're paying this much for a knife, when you're paying into the well into the, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars, um, you really should be getting a nice grind on your blade, and you are absolutely getting that with this uh, very slicey blade. It's not that not a hollow grind, but I tell you what, it's a it's a wide blade with a with a deep flat grind. Come down to fourteen thousandths, it's hard to go wrong with that. It's gonna it's gonna slice pretty darn well for anything you need it to. Um, I also just love the grind lines on this knife in general. It's it's so gorgeous. Um, satin, everything in that swedge up top is just a very nice little, uh, little cherry on top. It's really good from every angle. 
Um, I like, you know, the, the round lines. They just, they flow really well. So just a beautiful blade. I like how there's some, some milling done in the flipper tab and the jimping up here on top of the spine is pretty good. It's um <clears throat> not the... Not the grippiest, you know, tackiest jimping ever, but it does work. Either your thumb gets in there and it, and it wants to stay, so it does serve a purpose. It is very functional. Um, I do wish there was a little jimping on this flipper tab, though, and there's really not. There's there, there's none, and uh, that's not ideal, but it does still work just fine. We will talk more about that when we get to action. But now we're in the handle and ergo section, and boy, this could be a whole episode in itself just talking about this, all the work that goes into this. Um, but let's just start with the actual ergos themselves. The ergos are very good. Um, I would call them great. It just it feels very form-fitting into your hand. No hot spots whatsoever. Um, although, of course, you know what really uh, what really steals the show here is, of course, you know everything you see on the handle um, from the anodization to the inlay this is a mammoth tooth inlay yeah i said that right mammoth tooth so very very cool exotic inlay materials and they paired it so well with that bronze anodization in the speed holes as well as the pivot collar and then going back here into the backspacer this is a hand carved handcrafted backspacer which is pretty darn attractive. And they bronze that out as well. And then going on to the back, you have bronzed hardware, another bronze pivot, and uh, a very unique pocket clip. Now the pocket clip, I like the pocket clip. I don't have any huge issues with it. Ergonomically, it actually works very well. Um, you almost don't feel it at all in the hand. So it's, it's, it's an excellent ergonomically. Um, in terms of pocket retention, it's good. It's just getting over your pocket hem that could potentially be an issue depending on what kind of pants you're wearing. If you're wearing slacks, no problem. Basketball shorts, no problem. Uh, khakis, probably fine. If you're wearing some thicker jeans with some thick hem, you may have an issue getting them over that. Um, but overall, I do like the pocket clip. It's very unique. It goes very well with the knife. And uh, it, it, it's a nice accent to the overall piece. Um. But yes, very nice access to the liner, but to the uh, frame lock as well. As you can see, comes back here. It's you got the nice milling in there. Your thumb goes in just fine, and of course, easy access. Close the blade. So they did a lot of things right on this. Um, Olamic has always, in the past, been very good with attention to detail, and they offer they offer a specialty that most places cannot, and that is the freedom to customize a knife. Now this one obviously is something they stood up themselves, um, but they have a custom shop where you can go on, you can uh, pick out the Wayfair, or the Whippersnapper, or the Busker, or, or any other knife they offer, and you can make your own. You can put your own inlays, you can make your own anodization. It's, it, it's a very, very cool tool. It's very expensive. It adds up, you're looking anywhere from probably 600 to a thousand dollars for a knife depending on what you want but it's completely yours completely yours so that's not something that everyone's going to take advantage of but it's cool that they offer that i wish more places did maybe a little less prices but nonetheless they do at least offer it now going into the action on this guy the action is absolutely phenomenal um flies out very very smooth on the way out and what I really, what I really like about this flipper tab is that it works well light switching it and it works just as well push buttoning it. So however you prefer to deploy your blade, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be very enjoyable with this knife. Uh, very enjoyable. Uh, what I like most is that the flipper tab just, it really works. It doesn't dig into your finger. It doesn't cause blisters. It's not annoying. It's not one of those things to where it's the way it's designed. You can, you know, miss a flip sometime. You're never going to do this with this knife, even without the jimping. I still wish it had jimping, but even without the jimping, you're going to catch it every single time. Um, it's just, I've, I've, I've almost actually kind of tried to miss a flip and I, it's, it's very hard to do. So very reliable deployment, very solid feel, but also a very artsy and premium feel. Um, this is just as much of an art knife as it is a user knife. 
And overall, that's what's the best thing about this knife is it can be whatever you want it to be. It can be a safe queen. It can be a hard user. It can be a moderate user. It can be a light user. It can take whatever you want to throw at it. It's got all the all the bells and whistles. It's got the over travel stop. It's got the lock bar insert. It's got the premium steel. It's got the quality feel, smooth edges. Um, it's a great knife. It's a very high quality uh, premium knife. So it's not going to be for everybody because of that $795 price tag. But if you get it, you're not going to be disappointed. Um, it's one that if you wanted to really step out there and pick up a real high end knife and you already have a Chris Reeve or and a Koenig and you know, you want to get something else, I would definitely point you in the way of a Lamet Cutlery. I think they've got a lot of really amazing designs and they take a lot of care into what they do and uh, they put a lot of attention and detail into it. So it's a very, very good offering. The Olamic Wayfarer. Let me know what you guys think. What what other Olamic models catch your eye? Because they have a lot. They have more than people think. A lot of people have not heard a lot about them because they're definitely a more premium brand. But they're definitely getting up there in name and popularity. And uh, I think you're going to see even more of them in the future. So definitely a very strong offering here from Olamic. Let me know what you guys think. Hope you enjoyed this one. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And until the next one, I'm out.